Hello, my name is Luis Herrera. I'm in Orlando Health in Orlando, Florida. Uh, this is a typical left upper lobe lobectomy, and I've been asked to uh, share my experience with left upper lobectomy as this is one of the most challenging lobes we do robotically. Um, so this is a typical case of a fairly large stage 1B tumor. You see the pet here. Our port placement is the same, whether we're doing a left or right, upper or lower, is uh, four arms. They're placed on the seventh intercostal space typically, sometimes the eighth, and we have an assistant trocar posteriorly, which is a 12 millimeter trocar, which you can see here. So they're all robotic trocars, and this allows me to, in this case, exchange arm number three and share it between the assistant and my second right hand. So the first step in any lobectomy is the pulmonary ligament, and this is bit fairly basic, so we won't spend too much time here, but basically, the key is uh, achieving and maintaining the retraction so you can have two hands to operate. So that's the beauty of having that posterior third arm to uh, retract superiorly. Use the curved bipolar dissector. Any instrument works here, but this is our preferred energy just because it's so versatile. And the trick with this instrument, there's a learning curve to it, but the trick is to keep moving, have a light grip, slide off of the tissue as you uh, in coordination a step on the pedal and the energy so just providing some extra traction helps facilitate uh, the cutting uh, ability of this instrument if you have the tissue with not enough tension uh, it will just burn and just stay there so it's a combination of adequate retraction and timely um, energy application so we take a level 9 lymph node and that's pretty much it, so not too much to that. So the next step is uh, the subcranial and the hilar dissection. So I let the lung drop down towards the diaphragm and then retract it purely anteriorly. So that way my posterior arm is pushing and I use the assistant to retract the lower aspect of the lower lobe. So typically my assistant retracts as low as possible and I retract high up towards the head. So here's my assistant coming in. She's coming in through the uh, posterior robotic 12 trocar at this point. And this gives us, you know, two hands to work posteriorly and uh, dissect the posterior hilum. Basically mobilizing the lower lobe off of the hilar structures. So here you start to see the vein, the bronchus, the pulmonary artery, and then we start attacking the uh, level seven uh, nodal station. So here, obviously, uh, it's a little bit harder than the right side. And the key here is to try to avoid getting into bleeding. I mean, you get into bleeding here and you don't have the same amount of visualization that you have on the right side. So you have a bloody field and um, basically waste more time here. So take your time, identify the bronchioles, burn him, and notice how I resist the temptation to grab the lymph node. I use more spreading, more pushing to expose the vessels I need to take. Basically try to peel off this pleural covering over the nodes. Get the vessels individually so that way uh, once you have it more than 50% mobilized you can grab it gently and try to hold it, not pull it, so you can get under it and start burning the rest of the node. So it's not always this clean. You're gonna get some bleeding here and that's okay. But the key is to resist the urge to grab the node, which will tear if you grab it too soon. So take your time, try to free up the surrounding tissue around the node before you grab it. So here we're finishing up, kind of getting into the, um, area towards the level 10 L here but but it's still the subcranial packet. My retraction has not changed and basically once you have this out then you can um, control the rest of the bleeding. I use a little bit of surgery cell here if needed but that's typically how it goes. Once you do that, then I move up a little bit and start taking the uh, hilar lymph nodes in level 10L. This is a key maneuver for any left-sided case just because 
uh, A uh, is an important staging station. Uh, B, if you're going to do a lower lobectomy, uh, getting this lymph node out will create a lot of room between the pulmonary artery and the bronchus. Um, for an upper lobe, it won't he help you as much, but I think it's important for, for oncologic and staging purposes. So same principle, hold it, try not to grab it too early, get the bronchial vet feeder vessels, and then remove it. And basically, once I do that, I start moving further up towards the uh, pulmonary artery and focusing on the posterior segment branches. So same thing, I move my retracting hand a little bit higher. I have my assistant retracting lower so I can have two hands and attack this uh, level 10 L lymph node again. So same principles on roof the pleural covering. Once you have it kind of uh, unroofed, you can start mobilizing the edges, get this pleural envelope around it free. If you notice here, um, I could use a better uh, uh, assistance from the bedside assistant and uh, it's, uh, I didn't do as well here in advising her to come help me because if you notice I'm operating one-handed and yes this instrument allows me to do that but ideally she comes in and now I have two hands because now I can grab retract push and and have a true you know bimanual dissection experience so this lymph node is, is key here, so the goal is to mobilize as much of this lymph nodes as possible. This will open all the windows around the vessels and make getting around these vessels easier. So here it is, uh, the posterior segment branch, which is uh, A2 on the left side. Getting this lymph nodes mobilized, I'm cre creating an exit point or a window on the exit area around this vessel so that way I have less obstruction to my stapler. So in this case I can see this pretty well and that's basically because of the uh, fairly aggressive retraction forward and um, getting in the right plane from the beginning to skeletonize this vessel. So once I do that then you can start to see the anterior branch coming up soon and you don't want to go that far but sometimes you can get almost all the way around the top of the artery and clear this tissue which will make it easier then to get around the first branch of the artery which, which we will see later. So again more more of this uh, Hyler and AP window knows that you can get at this point if you want to. So now that that's done, basically it's pretty easy to get around this posterior segment branch. A little tissue here is still left. You can use the sponge as a dissector to get it out or just cut it. And as you know, each left upper lobe is different. It's just one of the biggest variabilities in terms of branching patterns, but in about 10 or 12 steps, uh, these cases can be done. The order of the steps may need to change from case to case, but in general, uh, all these steps need to be completed. So for this branch, I go from the anterior trocar site, which is the 12, which is the lowermost anterior trocar. In this case, arm number one. It's a curve tip 30 for all my vessels. And here's been applied. Take that. And no matter if the, if the patient has a poor fissure, this maneuver of cleaning out the artery back here will help. All that CO2 will start getting into the correct plane and help you identify the fissure and the pulmonary artery at the fissure much easier. So at the beginning, I didn't think in this case I was going to be able to see it, but with that dissection back there, all you do is you spread your instrument and you start seeing what the reflection of what the PA could be. And here it is, a little bit of uh, persistence. And, and I try not to fissure dive unless I need to. And when it's pretty thin and I can see it, like in this case, then yes, it makes it a lot easier if you can do this. But as you'll see later in the video, there's techniques to deal with purely incomplete fissures. So once you get that, with all the work we did at the back, you can almost join the dots, which you can see right here. In this case, I pretty much Bovi through a very thin fissure once I looked at it. Uh, here's another example of a little thicker 
feature on a different patient but same principle you know kind of spread I've already done all the work in the back so you can spread and kind of see if you get lucky and see the pulmonary artery and once you free that up you can create a tunnel and complete the fissure posteriorly so do you have to complete the fissures in the left upper lobectomy? No, you'll see later that we don't have to you can minimize our leaks but it definitely makes it a lot easier if you can at the beginning of the case do the hilar lymph nodes and complete the anterior or first the posterior fissure and then eventually the anterior fissure that will make your um, at least half of the battle won because then you can have clear visualization and exposure to the posterior segment and the lingular, lingular segment arteries so here it is just watch out here for the superior segment one mistake that I've done and seen is, is getting too low here and you start getting under the superior segment branch to the lower lobe so you want to make sure that you're aiming slightly upwards and staying on top of the artery not, not get on this you know inferior uh, edge you want to stay right on the very top and that will get you through to the back my right hand is almost like a hook that is retracting the tissue while the left hand continues to work and, and spread trying to connect the dots to what we did in the back and it's critical here to get on the right plane if you're it's very common to be in two different planes where you're right on the artery posteriorly but then on the front or on the fissure you're you're too superficial and not not able to connect the dots so it's very very key here to be on the right plane and aim slightly uh, cephalad towards the head so here we go we're creating the window you can see uh, and see I was going too low so now by going higher towards the head you can start to see a clear plane so different ways to do this but I think this is the the safest way you can start putting a stapler here if you want to but I think it's better to to find an actual opening where you can fit the stapler without risking injuring a, a vessel or the lung so here it is encircled and I chose a 30 just because it's such a short bridge of tissue Do you need vessel loops for this? No, not really. I mean, if you have a big enough window, you can do it without it. I think it's just easier to make sure I'm going on the right on the right plane. So again, this is going from the front, so 12 millimeter trocar. I divide that. So then, once that's done, you'll have clear exposure of the pulmonary artery. And uh, as you notice in the first part of the video, I showed myself uh, cutting the posterior segment artery from the back because it was so clearly isolated. Uh, in this case, um, it's actually easier to do this once you have the posterior fissure divided. This patient had a tiny posterior ascending branch here. Um, can you use a vessel sealer or clips or tie this? Uh, absolutely, you can use a vessel sealer here. You can put a clip and then do a vessel sealer. The problem is that to pull the vessel sealer for this vessel is actually more expensive than using a white load. So I just chose a white load here because I did not anticipate I would use the vessel sealer for anything else. It seems like a, like a truck for such a small vessel, but uh, it does the job it won't fall off you can certainly clip it you can tie it um, but I think for the sake of uh, timeliness and simplicity it's easier to I think staple it the small vessels but I have used the vessel sealer in cases like this uh, it works very well um, I usually do it a little further distally that way if there's a problem you can still put a clip on it or suture it I always do a drive-by maneuver. You see me go past the vessel before I engage it. That makes sure that the vessel uh, is in the right alignment and then the stapler is not going to have any jerky movements like it can have at the extremes of the angulation. So here it is, dividing this little vessel and then we're done.
once this is done we have basically the whole back of the fissure exposed the posterior segment branch exposed and then it's a matter of mobilizing these lymph nodes this is another example of a posterior segment branch this is a more typical size branch a little larger so I always dissect first the exit point so basically going around it and superiorly past the vessel that I want to make sure that I have a a window to come out of and I could have done a lot more there to make the window bigger safer than what I'm doing now here which is kind of bluntly dissecting you can do this but you have to be careful because this uh, if you apply pressure and you're still being caught you may you may injure the vessel so so it's better to spend the time you know and uh, dissect this that I'm doing now before you put your instrument in there so once you have a clear window it's a lot easier you don't have to do this step that I'm doing now trying to clean this connective tissue around the vessel here's my drive-by going past the target to make sure that is the correct angle engage it vessel loop comes out and once you're past then it's a matter of freezing your hands, taking the vessel loop out, making sure that the lung is well exposed but not under too much tension and uh, just divide you'll see me here push the aorta down that way it's better to push the aorta down than to lift up right because you don't, you don't want to put any undue tension on these vessels That's a more typical size posterior segment branch. But again, this is a lot easier once you've completed the posterior fissure. So that part is done. Now, uh, once I have that whole area of the back exposed, you see that 11L lymph node again exposed there. Then we'll focus more anteriorly on the lingular branch. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to retract in a similar way, kind of inferiorly and anteriorly to expose the lingular branch. Whether you take the lingular branch first and then complete the fissure or complete the anterior fissure and then the lingular branch, uh, it depends on the case. I mean, typically, uh, if you can complete the fissure because you have a huge window, that's great. But uh, oftentimes it's safer to divide the lingular artery. Uh, that way, when you're bringing your stapler in, you're not hitting into the artery or risking injury to the lingular branch. So the key here is pretty aggressive lymph node dissection here skeletonizing the whole vessel, getting all these lymph nodes mobilized, the more you do this, especially that level 11 L sum node, which is between the lingular artery and the bronchus, the easier it will be to pass the stapler. This area here is pretty vascular, you encounter some big bronchial, sometimes they'll bleed, you just have to be ready for it and know that, you know, that's expected bleeding, if you can avoid it, it'll be easier to visualize your, your dissection planes. So here's coming through, trying to get those little connective tissue fibers off, trying to spread a little bit more. And again, this is all from the front. So if you notice, most of the stapling comes from the front at this stage. Essentially, posterior structures are better divided from the front. Anterior structures are usually better divided from the back. So here it comes. Pretty good angle. If you notice, I choose angles where the stapler is almost straight. I mean, there's very little articulation on the stapler at this point. And that makes it a lot safer because you don't have any 
extreme angles, tension. So it's a slight 15 degree bend at the at the elbow of that of that stapler. Once that's complete, I go to the front. This is the superior pulmonary vein we're looking at. The lung is now retracted posteriorly, and I'm basically dissecting this lymph node tissue that's always here between the veins. And what that allows us, allows us to do is uh, create a little window. You almost feel the upper lobe bronchus when you do this, and then you want to come out where the lingular artery used to be. The more you clean this lymph node out of here, the easier this step will be. This also sets the stage for later dividing the uh, superior pulmonary vein. So here's this annoying lymph node, it's always here. So the more you get this out of the way, the easier your life will be. So if you can take this whole lymph node from the front, then you don't have to even deal with this. But it takes time, so I decided to just mobilize it out of the way, create a big enough space, get all these bronchial vessels out of the way, so my stapler has no problem coming through there. So the key here is not, not moving fast, but, but avoiding unforced errors, avoiding fumbling maneuvers, avoiding having to repeat the same step over and over. So here I'm a little bit of futzing around and kind of cleaning maybe too much, but I, I find it helpful to create a big, big window here for the stapler. And again, the um, vessel loop does help maintain that window while I come in with the stapler. So but once you have the posterior fissure, anterior fissure, lingular artery, posterior segment artery, now you basically have the two lobes completely separated. So it's a lot easier to achieve exposure. The lower lobe is completely detached pretty much. And um, you have half the vital one here if you can get to this step. You can see the bronchus there. So the next step is to focus on the vein and the first branch of the artery. So here, for the first time, we're going to retract inferiorly. And I find it helpful to do uh, the AP window and these superior mediastinal dissection. So Sometimes I leave the level 5 and 6 lymph nodes for later, but at least uh, I want to dissect this mediastinal pleura overlying the uh, hilum. The reason to do the AP window 5 and 6 later is that if you do it now, you can. The problem is that try not to get into bleeding, because if you get into bleeding from that station, then all these tissue planes are dirty, obscured, and it's hard to get to those critical steps that are coming up now. So to me, I dissect the level five and six here if they're easy, if they're coming out nice, if they're not bloody. If they start to go bloody, better to finish the lobe and come back. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a dissection in a, in a bloody mess. So keep that in mind. You know, uh, it's one of those things that it varies. Uh, in this case, you know, these lymph nodes are coming off pretty easily. So I'm going to take him, you know, I'm just going to get him out of the way. It's a little bit easier exposure. But if there were to be bloody, then, um, like I said, it, it affects your visualization. You can see the vagus nerve in the background. I'm going to get that down and gone. So here you want to get right on the pulmonary artery and right on the edge of the superior pulmonary vein. That's, that's critical because um, it's important to get around the, the superior pulmonary vein and it's important to get the first branch of the pulmonary artery. So what we want to do is kind of 
find that plane right on the vessel and really get all this nodal tissue off. From here you can also see how many branches are in the first PA trunk, meaning the anterior segment branch and the apical branch. Uh, you'll be able to see how many branches, how big is it, where does it end, how big of a, a stump is it or a trunk. So I, try, I like to do this and clean it off until I'm on the artery. And obviously you take your time here, you make sure that you're not grabbing the wrong thing, but if you can grab and lift, then it's safe to, safe to cauterize. So this is one of the advantages of going on the seventh inner space. You can go on the eighth inner space and there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes getting to visualize this up here is a little difficult. Um, I use a 30 down scope always. And that also helps having that top down view where I'm fairly far from my instruments when I'm looking at this area. So here's more of this uh, tissue between the superior pulmonary vein and the main pulmonary artery. So dissect as much as I can here. And then it's a matter of uh, taking the superior pulmonary vein. So here what I do is I retract now with my bipolar. That way I have a blunter instrument, which is my retracting instrument in the back. I did not change stroke arts. I'm basically going underneath my R number three and using this blunter instrument to get around. I obviously did a little bit of dissection on the retro um, the space between the upper labronchus and the vein. So take your time here, dissect carefully. I use this kind of like a peanut dissector to make sure that I kind of sweep that tissue into my jaw and make sure I don't have the back wall of the vein. So once this is done, well, it's kind of like a peanut dissector, pretty easy technique. Um, and that way you don't have to force anything through. I'm gonna grab the vessel loop. I think the vessel loop is important here just to maintain exposure. So here's where the assistant trocar uh, comes into play. So uh, as you notice in the poor placement picture, my assistant trocar is perfectly aligned with my R number three, which is my bipolar. So I'm gonna hold up with my number one, take my number three arm out. My assistant then docks R number three to the 12 millimeter trocar posteriorly, and this is the angle I get. So this angle allows me to go around the vein without hitting the artery, without basically hardly bending the stapler at all. So it's a very straight shot. Um, I do lose my assistant temporarily. Some people ask me, why don't you just increase or make one of your trocars a 12 posteriorly and use that. That way you don't have to be undocking and redocking the arm. Well, uh, the answer I have is that when you put the 12 millimeter trocar so close or so high in the 17th space, it, it be, behaves very awkwardly, like it's maximally articulated and it doesn't function as well. And two, it takes about probably 40 seconds for my assistant to undock R number three and dock it on the assistant trocar and then give it back. So it's really a pretty quick transition. So once, once we've done the vein, this part here is very important. And I think it's probably the the key of a successful left upper lobectomy and is this lymph node here. This is a level 11 lymph node that sits cephalad to the upper lobe bronchus, inferior to the pulmonary artery and below the vein stump that we just divided. So if we pull this vein stump off and we start rolling it more distally or peripherally into the lung, you will expose that lymph nerve. 
So the, basically, the more we roll off that vein off of the artery and that lymph node, the bigger window we're going to have. But it's a very important step because if we don't do this right, I think it's unsafe to get around this vessel. So you have to spend the time here and get this lymph nodes out of the way. So when in doubt, uh, remove the lymph nodes. And that will always clarify your anatomy, open up your windows for the stapler. So it's five or ten minutes that are that are well spent here. Of course, I have enough traction to see. Oh, you have to be careful that you don't overstretch this vessel. But I think the most common mistake is injury to the uh, main pulmonary artery going down as you're trying to get around this branch. And I think the reason for that is not enough mobilization of this lymph node right here. You can do a lot of this dissection from the back. So this lymph node could be almost completely off from the back after you take the uh, posterior segment branch and that way when you get to this point a little bit of dissection will have a wide open window so so here it is the lymph is coming off the bronchus I can see it and you start to see the back wall of that first pulmonary artery branch and you see this thin areolar tissue so you're going to take advantage of that and gently spread So it feels like butter. People say, well, you can't feel with the robot. And that's true. It doesn't give you any feedback. But I can always tell when something is going smoothly because it, it moves at a constant speed. When you're hitting something, as your hand moves on the console, the instrument stops moving. And that's where you have to be really careful. If the instrument stops moving, be where you're hitting something. So here the trick is how can I retract the lung so I can A, not have too much tension, B, show myself where I'm going in, but also I wanna see where I'm coming out. So one trick to do that is to mobilize this vein and lymph nodes even further north or further peripherally. And sometimes you can look at the bifurcation here and see yourself going through. So first thing, is to see where my hand is. See the window, see where the main PA is coming through. I can see it there, so then I can do this. So I can see pretty clearly where I'm going in. How about where I'm coming out? So I'm gonna move the camera, retract a little different, and I do a side-to-side -side wiggling or moving side-to-side -side a few millimeters just to Make sure that I'm not hitting anything or moving anything I don't want. So once I have that through, you notice if my left hand or number one is coming through, then that means that that's where the stapler is going to come from. So that's how I choose whether to fire the stapler from the front or the back. So I'm find this, finding this uh, vessel loop. Um, pretty easy. Any other tricks here? Well, you could take the bronchus first and that will expose this artery pretty clearly. The problem is that taking the bronchus first is not very easy and it requires a lot of tension and um, pulling on that bronchus and you'll see that in a later video. So here I am trying to see. I want to see myself going in the correct window. I don't want to put this blade through the pulmonary artery going down to the lower lobe. So here I just present it right underneath my loop. A little wiggle side to side, you can appreciate there. I'm not so happy there. There, I felt it go through. So once I felt it go through, I want to see myself or see the tip of this instrument. So I'm going to retract differently. And all the movements here are needless to say very 
slow and short and deliberate you know I'm not doing any fast movements especially now I'm completely frozen because my job is to show myself this anvil make sure that I'm through I do not move unless I see my tip there yeah I saw the tip now I move so it's a very controlled move once that's done, you divide that, retract a little further, and that's what I did. So once that's done, all I have is the bronchus left. So clear all the slim fans out. That'll be easier now than later. And then we divide the bronchus. The bronchus, uh, basically, I usually leave it for last, but like I said, you could do the bronchus before the first branch of the PA. I prefer to use this from the assistant trocar. And the reason is that I have three hands or, or two hands to um, maintain the exposure. And you see my bipolar is kind of in the right direction. Basically the goal in my mind is to keep the staple line parallel to the pulmonary artery. When you do the stapling of the bronchus from the front, you can do that, but the staple line is going to be almost rubbing and facing the pulmonary artery. So I prefer to just have it aligned like this. So the posterior hand retracts up the left hand retracts lower and anterior and then the assistant trocar comes in with the stapler again I'm going to drive by make sure that it looks good maneuver it yeah that's my drive by right there you see how it's perfectly aligned Make sure you don't get the front of here by mistake. Make sure you're past it. Make sure you don't have the PA by mistake. Close it down and fire it. I don't test ventilate. I've skeletonized all the nodes. I see it. I see what I need to take. So I just take it. If you're unsure or at the beginning, you can't test ventilate. You just have to turn the CO2 off and ventilate. Sometimes you lose your view completely. There's nothing wrong, but it does take some time. So once that's done, if I haven't done the level 5 and 6 AP window nodes, then I'll do them at this point. But in this case, I've done them already, so I'm pretty much completely done. So there you go. Lingular artery, posterior seminal artery, a truncus branch feeding the apical and anterior segments, the vein and the bronchus. So... What if there's no fissure? I get this asked a lot, and it certainly is one of the more difficult situations, but it's totally doable. Uh, you can do a front-to-back approach, which I'll show you here. So this patient has no real fissure. I've done the back already, the posterior dissection, and nothing. So I say, well, let's go take the vein, because this will allow, it to, allow us to lift the parenchyma off the bronchus and dissect further and hopefully see the artery. Once you see the artery, it's game over. I mean, it's from the front. It's fairly easy. So I'm going to take the superior pulmonary vein here from the posterior port side. And then that level 11 lymph node that sits between the stump of the pulmonary vein I divided the left upper lobe bronchus and the main pulmonary artery. So that's very important lymph node to clear this little tissue here. This will open that window completely for us to be able to divide these vessels. And from the back, the more you can take these vessels off, the easier will be what I call the exit point, right? I'm thinking there could be a branch there, so I'm going to leave that alone. You want to get right on this periaventitial tissue and get this off so that way you can roll this lymph node tissue off 
and is easier to do. So here I fed this little vessel from the back so you can see that there's a fairly small branch here to the apical segment here, apical posterior segment or the anterior segment branch is a little lower down. So again I see myself going in, I see myself coming out from the back around this vessel and these slow movements is the key here you don't want to move fast or move jerky here so that's taken care of so we have vein we have the first branch and here's another little branch that I found So typically you have a larger trunk with all three, two or three branches coming off. Uh, this patient had like three individual branches. So once I've done that, right, I have the vein and a couple of the arteries. I start taking the fissure anteriorly here to create more room. Now I retract the lung posteriorly. And the first thing I'm going to see, because we have already taken the vein, is this bronchus and this 11L lymph node. So this lymph node holds the key. If you have no fissure, take the vein and get this lymph node out. That will probably open up 90% of your difficult left upper lobectomies because this sump node that you're seeing here, although bloody and painful sometimes, will show you where the lingular artery is of the PA and once you find the lingual artery branch you can complete the fissure fully and go from there. So that's taken care of. We're going to start looking in this little window here. This is the bronchus and in this case because I took those two first arteries it's fairly easy to expose the bronchus. Now this maneuver you have to be very careful if you haven't taking those arteries first because the clamp and more importantly the stapler and this maneuver can actually be pushing into the artery. So the only way I feel comfortable here is if I've taken that artery. Yes, a curved tip stapler could have helped here, but we don't have a 45 curved tip, so I had to deal with this, but this is a tricky maneuver and sometimes it makes this fissureless uh, left upper lobectomy is a little bit harder. But once I take the bronchus, I can lift up the bronchial stump and keep working on the lymph nodes at this point. And you can see a very clear lingular artery with a bifurcation, like a, to segment four and five. So here it is, more lymph nodes being mobilized, posterior trocar stapling site, basically the assistant trocar, and that's what I like it, you know, it's impossible to get this branch from the front. And then look, if my bipolar gets around it, then my assistant can get around it, you see? So basically it's perfectly aligned with R number three. Pass it through. And once I do that, then all I have is fissure. And you can take that last. So this is truly a fissure last approach like we would do with a vasculobectomy. And that's it. Minimize air leaks. Do a completely oncologic surgery. And then I'm going to take the AP window nodes here, which I didn't do before to try to avoid bleeding. The same principle, I try not to grab the nodes until they're fully mobilized. And once they're free, you can
custom grabbing them pulling them out and carefully dissecting them this is another example of a patient with no fissure so if you don't want to do a front to back approach you can go here between the veins dissect this lymph node off and start creating like a tunnel. You see the pulmonary artery here. Now the fissure is bad, but once you start seeing this tunnel, you can lift this parenchyma off of the pulmonary artery as far as you can go. And this will take a few kind of half fires of the stapler, which is painful, but you don't want to shove the stapler into the artery, so it's better to not get too greedy here. Take what it gives you. And if you keep lifting this parenchyma off the artery, then uh, it becomes a little simpler. It's almost like creating a tunnel. But um, it takes a little bit of time. It takes a few stapling loads but that way you can go back to a normal approach without having to do that more challenging bronchus maneuver. So here I go. So the question is, yeah, I would love to go through that window, but sometimes it won't go. So you have to take it, and here we go, it went through. Sometimes you have to take it in a couple of bites to avoid risking putting a hole in the artery. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you have 12 steps to deal with there. Uh, the sequence may vary from case to case, but uh, essentially it's the same principles. I hope you enjoyed it and this helps you in your cases. Thank you very much for your attention.